One developer cannot write a Premiere Pro. One developer cannot write a QuickBooks, although you can write <laughs> SQL Ledger. In the comments section on my Windows 11 must be stopped video, which by the way, I am going to make an update video about. Stay tuned for that, you know, subscribe and all. I had a lot of comments from people saying that I didn't have to agree to the Windows license agreement. That, yeah, you don't own Windows, it's a license to you, and you can have that license revoked at any time by Microsoft, but hey man, you agreed to it. Well, let me use an analogy that might illustrate the problem with this. If I offer you a hamburger or a hot dog, you get to choose between eating a hamburger or eating a hot dog. And you make your choice, and you eat the food of your choice, and that's the end of it. If I offer you a hamburger and a hot dog, but if you pick hot dog, I tell you that you'll get shot in the face, well, now your hot dog comes with a free execution. So what are you going to pick? Technically, you have a choice. You can choose hot dog and then be shot in the face and die. But that's not really a choice, is it? Yes, it's a technical choice, but it's not a choice if you want to continue to survive and exist and be a living human being. In much the same way, software terms of service, licensing, the whole you are licensed not sold, the fact that there's no legal ownership of the copy of the software, that you don't own what you pay for, well, you can choose not to agree to these terms, much like you can choose not to agree to the click wrap agreement on Adobe Premiere Pro or whatever. But when you make that choice, when you choose not to accept the license agreement, you also don't get to use that software. Oh, hey, editing Jody here. See the glasses? That's editing. So I wanted to mention real quick, interrupt my own video, that software license agreements that you don't get to negotiate any terms of where you you know clip click wrap whatever it is they're called contracts of adhesion or take it or leave it contracts where one side sets the terms and the other side has to either accept the terms or be gone you don't get to negotiate if it ever went to litigation these software license agreements these click wraps or whatever they tend to be interpreted in favor of the party that didn't get to negotiate their side of the agreement. So while people think if you agree to a license agreement, you've agreed to, for example, let Apple take your firstborn son and put your firstborn son in the middle of a human centipede, um, the courts would interpret in your favor, not in Apple's favor in that case, because you didn't get to negotiate that out and that's an unreasonable thing for them to demand. So they can say whatever they want in these contracts of adhesion, but the fact that you don't get to negotiate, it kind of blunts it if it ever does make it to litigation. Of course, part of the problem is it typically never makes it to litigation. Mandatory arbitration, <coughs> mandatory arbitration. Um, which should also not be something that they should be allowed to force you into, but I digress. Back to the video. <laughs> My phone went off. Taco Bell, what the fuck? So, what happens if you choose not to use Windows? Well, we're going to assume that Mac OS is the same because the truth is Mac OS and Windows, the license agreements have very similar provisions. It's license, not sold. The, you don't own your copy. We can pull your license, blah, blah, blah. So both of them have equally onerous terms of service or license agreements or whatever you want to call them. So Linux would be your only other option. So what happens if you pick, instead of Windows or Mac OS, you go Linux and you refuse to accept the Windows license agreement? No QuickBooks, no Adobe Premiere, no Adobe Illustrator, no Adobe Photoshop. These are major pro applications that you can't use. Oh wait, what's that? What's that? Did you say Microsoft Office? No Microsoft Office. You have LibreOffice, but guess what it's not compatible with? Microsoft Office. Guess what else is a problem? Outlook. No access to Outlook in Office? Well, people who use Outlook might be sending an Outlook-rich text format, and you'll have to go find a thing in Thunderbird to work around it and all that. This is a more general problem with, well, you could have just chosen not to use Windows and to use Linux. That's fine and great, but an operating system and a cluster of programs that come with it do not make a complete system. The problem is the application environment. The applications that you use 
are the most important thing on your system. Now granted, Firefox and Chrome, you can get those for Linux all day long. You can get all kinds of web browsers. But web browsers are not what people who actually have to get real work done need to use. If you want a good video editor, if you want a professional grade video editor, or audio editor, or digital audio workstation, you're not going to get those on Linux. There are none, at least not that I am aware of. I am aware of many products on Linux. The Live's video editing system, the uh, Kden Live, OpenShot, yes, these are video editors, but guess what? I've tried them all. They're not very good. A lot of them are iMovie level. Lives look like, oh hey, wow, a non-linear editor that looks like maybe it might be more on par with Premiere. It's not. Lightworks, oh my God, don't even get me started on Lightworks. And Lightworks, they did the whole open source thing, but then they sort of backed away and became difficult. And frankly, I found Lightworks to be very difficult to work with. If you want to edit video, your options pretty much boil down to Final Cut Pro 10 or Adobe Premiere Pro. You, there's also DaVinci Resolve, but I don't think that's available for Linux either. I haven't looked. There are a few programs, but they're all Mac OS and Windows. So yeah, you're right. I could just agree to not say yes to the license agreement. That's fine, I have that choice. But guess what? I'm locked out of all these proprietary applications that are actually the only good solutions to get professional work done in certain fields. I'm also locked out of certain applications that are only made for Windows and not for Linux and that don't run under Wine. So, while this choice exists, you're also talking about the video you're watching right now potentially not being possible. I think K. Rita, or Krita, however you want to pronounce it, may be one of the most professional looking replacements that you can get. But GIMP is not Photoshop, K Krita is not Photoshop or Illustrator. You know, Inkscape is not Illustrator at all. Uh, there's just all kinds of things that are missing from these open source solutions. And until they catch up, if they ever catch up, they're not going to be suitable replacements. You lock yourself out of professional software, you can't do that professional work. And this is the bigger problem. You can't run Premiere Pro on Wine. You can't run a lot of things that are professional on Wine. QuickBooks, not on Wine. Guess what the standard is for accounting, for corporate accounting? It's QuickBooks. That's the standard. That is the accounting package that the vast majority of businesses use. Oh, oh, you wanna use Sage 50, previously known as Peachtree, instead of QuickBooks? Guess what? You're not gonna get that to work on Wine either. That's a squirrely piece of software, by the way. There's all kinds of stuff that doesn't work right under a Linux system. And I hate, 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 hate to say this, but it's the biggest problem with Linux. It's not that Linux itself is some kind of terrible system, it's great. There are a lot of wonderful things about open source software in Linux, but if you need Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro, you can't use Linux. And if you do, you have to have another machine that runs that proprietary OS lying around to run it on anyway. Or run it in a virtual machine, well guess what? <laughs> you ever try to edit video? You know you need a lot of uh, hardware acceleration for that garbage now. You know that encoding is an extremely intensive process, right? Emulating or virtualizing video editing is a disaster and you're still running the proprietary OS under the virtual machine. It's not a viable option. I don't know what else to say. The people that are saying it's a choice, that you can choose not to run Windows, well yes, but you can also choose not to run software that runs on Windows. You can choose to not be a part of the environment that the vast majority of computers use and interface with. You can also choose to live in a cabin in the woods, but you won't have internet or telephone or electricity that isn't solar. You, you can choose to live in the middle of nowhere and have no infrastructure and be disconnected from society, and guess what? 
It'll be really hard to participate in society. You can choose not to have a smartphone, but as you choose not to have a smartphone, guess what? As everybody has standardized on text messaging, as it's now become to the point where you have to have a smartphone to set up two-factor authentication just to get an account on a website nowadays, that everything assumes you have a smartphone or a cell phone that can do text messaging at a minimum and that you always have access to that and you totally won't ever lose access to your own phone number. What are you going to do? What are you going to do if you don't have a smartphone? Guess what? It's going to be awful hard to set up a Gmail account if Google demands that you provide a cell phone number. It's going to be awful hard to set up Facebook, Twitter, any modern social media account if Google requires or Facebook requires or whoever requires that you provide a telephone number in addition to just feeding them an email address. You can't live without a smartphone today without cutting yourself off from a huge chunk of society. Much the same way you can run Linux instead of Windows, but you're cutting yourself off from that professional software that is only available on Windows or Mac OS. The point is you don't necessarily always have a choice. If you run proprietary operating systems, you gain access to the software that runs on top of them. But if you don't, you're cut off. And if your job or just any way that you make money or get things done requires that proprietary software, you don't really have a choice, do you? Every day that you operate with Linux only, guess what? <laughs> You can't make money. You can't do those tasks. You might have a substitute that is unfortunately somewhat incompatible or inferior in some way or many ways, but you don't have that gold standard software. It's a major problem. It needs to be dealt with. I don't have the answers for this. I think, however, and what I would propose is that someone needs to foster some kind of uh, an open source foundation of some sort, some sort of nonprofit, and get everyone else on board to feed some money into that so they can hire programmers to write and work on professional replacements for these software packages. If there really is enough interest in free and open source software that we want to get away from Windows and Mac OS and move towards Linux, BSD, whatever, Maybe what we need is some kind of a corporate structure that can take donations and enough people that support open source to pool their money into that and support actually replacing Premiere Pro and Illustrator and QuickBooks and these other pro applications that don't work anywhere else to replace them with a suitable open source, easily available, cross-compilable, forkable, updatable, you know, serviceable long after the original developers are dead piece of software for open source stuff. And you know what? If it gets to that point, I know I only have like 6,000 subscribers. I say only, but it, it was like 1,400 two weeks ago. But if it gets to that point, if enough people are behind me on this, I would be willing to go through all of the pain and struggle that it takes to set up such a business entity. The biggest problem is that if you set up a business entity like this, you can't really accept any kind of outside investment that comes with conditions. Because open source software, you let it all go for free. You are giving the product away. You are literally getting money from other people to not charge money for the product. <laughs> Which is a funny thing to think about. But that's the only realistic solution. You need an actual corporation that professionally develops professional software and focuses on that and only that. What we have right now is all these other software packages that just have people who do it in their spare time or people that have devoted a significant amount of their time, but one developer cannot write a Premiere Pro. One developer cannot write a QuickBooks, although you can write <laughs> SQL Ledger, which requires installation on a web server, so that's immediately out for the vast majority of normal users. This is not going to work. Anyway, I'm rambling. Bottom line is that sometimes you don't have a choice. Sometimes you have to use proprietary software and operating systems. No, sometimes you don't get the option to say no to that licensing agreement because you know what? At the end of the day, somebody somewhere has to pay your bills. Otherwise, you don't survive. <laughs> and what do you do then? Take this house out of here, take this camera away, 
take away the electricity and the water and the trash and the sewer and all that, take the car, guess what? You're not watching this video, you're not hearing me speak, and I can't help you. So let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. I really look forward to hearing what you have to say. Have a wonderful day. Like, comment, subscribe, go to jodybruchon.com to financially support me so I can keep focusing on these videos and not, you know, doing all this mundane work that doesn't let me talk to you about these issues. Have a great day. Take care.